Selfish Women is a book that I wrote because I wanted to answer a question that seemed to me to be obvious and yet very little understood or very little discussed. And that question is why are women so encouraged throughout all times of history, all places, to prioritise others rather than ourselves? It struck me that for all women in all places and all times, being selves was a problem. And those women who have throughout history spoken about the importance of self-interest, self-regard, are women of whom we're often suspicious. So I wanted to think both about women who espoused rather extreme positions of selfishness, self-regard, self-interest, women such as the American capitalist writer Ayn Rand, uh, women such as Margaret Thatcher, our own um, former prime minister, so I wanted to look at women who espouse this politics or philosophy of selfishness as limit cases of what it means for a woman to espouse the kind of philosophy that we don't expect women to espouse. But then I also wanted to see how this problem, this problem of woman and self occupying the same category, obtained for all women, ordinary women in the world, in all times and places. And I thought about all the ways in which being selfish is often seen as the worst thing a woman can be. Women who don't have children are seen to be unnatural and therefore selfish, too concerned with their own self. Women who do have children are often policed for the extent to which they're being sufficiently selfless in prioritising their children. If they go out to work, they're bad mothers. If they stay at home, they're withdrawing labour from the economy and therefore not being productive citizens. There are all kinds of ways in which double binds that affect women have precisely to do with the degree to which we do or don't self-sacrifice. I think Ayn Rand and Margaret Thatcher were both unashamedly selfish women. They are not identical in uh, the policies and um, ideas that they held. I think it's easy to sort of run them together as interested firstly in the individual rather than the, the collective, that's certainly the case. But Rand in particular has quite a sophisticated and often underplayed and ignored philosophy of what she calls rational self-interest. And what um, strong critics of Rand often focus on is the degree to which she thinks that the way of living a good life, of being happy, is to identify self-interest and then act on it. That's what gives the good life. And many people criticize that because they assume that has to be at the to the detriment of others, that that has to be something that means that you don't care about anyone else. But she's very clear that she's not saying quite that. She's saying that if you have yourself and your own happiness and your own life project as the highest value, your freedom issues from that, but other people will similarly be living their best life, their self-projects, and your freedom ends where theirs begins. So it's quite a, a classic liberal position in many ways, but the degree to which Ayn Rand wants us all to be able to um, live our self-interested, self-full, which is a term I've created, lives, um, is, is very often ignored in, in the very forceful critiques of Rand. The expectation on Margaret Thatcher to bring up other women, to have women around her in Parliament, is one that I think you know, it's a fair criticism. She did not increase um, in any meaningful way representation of, of women or of other minorities within Parliament. But I think there's a real problem in that what we expect of female leaders is that they will only represent others who are of their group. And I think we see that consistently in coverage of leaders and politicians at the moment. And this is an extension really of the point I make in Selfish Women, that we pigeonhole people according to the identity group they're perceived to belong to. And we have certain expectations of them, that they will have a collective identity or a collective loyalty before being individuals. So it seems like an extra burden is being placed upon those who are not rich white men to be every woman. Thank you.